next. This guy is 6'2", 220 pounds, but he swears he can fit every inch of his frame through this tennis racket. I've had people tell me that they didn't think my arms were real. And come on down here. What makes this kitty so amazing? It climbed a tree and hasn't come down in three years. It's all ahead on Ripley's. Whether they're playing with toys, playing with each other, or just hanging out people watching, cats are known for their curious nature. But Ripley's found one feline whose unusual habits set it a breed apart. Because believe it or not, this cat insists on living in a tree. And it hasn't come down once in over three years. You hear me, come on down here. The strange scenario all started when barking dogs sent this cat clawing up the bark of this oak tree. Charles McLean, a resident of Carthage, Mississippi, named him Tree Cat after discovering the frightened feline clinging to the branches above. I heard a little kitten hollering up in the tree, so we came out and investigated it. I tried to get it down, and it was frightened, and it went up high. Come on out of that pocket up there, and let's go eat. Tree Cat, who's got plenty of altitude to go with his attitude, has Charles wrapped around his furry little paw. In fact, Charles gets up every day at 6.30 just to make breakfast for his feline friend. Then, climbs a 15-foot ladder to leave the food on a platform he'd built from scratch. Charles even designed a little dream house to shelter Tree Cat. He's got a good view. He can watch the traffic. He knows he's going to get his meals on time. Now, some of these other cats around, they don't know when they're going to get their food. Not even wicked weather is enough to drive Tree Cat down from the 60-foot oak. Still, Ripley's conducted a stakeout to be absolutely positive he wasn't sneaking out at night. To everyone's surprise, Tree Cat never budged. In fact, he even has a guest now, a little black kitten who recently climbed the ladder and made himself at home. So Charles built him a house, too. A couple of months ago, I noticed another black, jet black kitten up the tree with him. And they're getting along. Feline expert Dr. Tracy McFarland believes Tree Cat must have experienced a significant trauma to drive him up a tree. She still can't believe it. In 17 years, I have never heard of a cat going up a tree and staying there. And although a skittish tree cat won't let Charles hold him, he has become friendlier over the years, even allowing himself to be petted at times. So is tree cat destined to live out his nine lives in that big oak tree? I guess when I get too old to climb the ladder to feed him, someone else will probably climb it and feed him. He's got it too good up there. He's got it better than any cats I know of. The guy in this next story really knows how to handle a tennis racket. He creates quite a stir every time he hits the court. And he does it with no strings attached. You'll see what I mean. Whenever Jeff Brennan grips a tennis racket in his hands, most people can't help but stop and stare. But it isn't Jeff's game that's amazing. It's what he's doing with his racket that's shocking. Believe it or not, this six foot two inch man is about to cram every inch of his broad frame right through the center of this racket. Whether it's hanging out with his girlfriend or playing bass guitar, Jeff is a little more flexible than most. For the most part, Jeff is pretty normal, but on occasion I've seen him put his arms back behind his head when he watches TV, and he does this weird thing with his legs, the ostrich walk. I just started walking like that one day, you know, and I thought it looked funny, and uh, people got pretty freaked out, so I kept doing it. Doctors say Jeff's flexibility is due to extra elasticity in the tendons and joints of his body. This human pretzel first realized he had a special talent when he was a kid. I guess uh, it would have all started back when I was probably in second or third grade. I would put my arms behind my head in class to kind of rest my head back, and uh, people would start to point at me, my fellow classmates, they'd make faces and say, you know, what are you doing, you know, and I'd be like, what, you know? But what looks uncomfortable and even painful to the rest of us is just Jeff's way of relaxing. The only time I start to realize what, that I'm really doing it is when I start to cut off the circulation in my arms or, or, what, or my legs or whatever. 
This real-life rubber man's contortions are so mind-boggling, he's been invited to perform on stage for the Jim Rose Circus. In fact, Jeff's bizarre flexibility never fails to get a reaction. People get very freaked out. They have disbelief. Um, I've had people tell me that they didn't think my arms were real. Jeff limbers up. Then he's ready to start stuffing all 220 pounds of his body through a standard size tennis racket. It's a task with some inherent difficulties. After sliding his arms and skull through the webless frame, he begins the unsettling squeezing process. As expected, his shoulders immediately prove to be troublesome. Obviously, my shoulders are wider than the tennis racket, so I have to make my top frame smaller enough to get through there. So yeah, I do have to kind of slide my shoulder out of place. Um, sometimes it pops. I like to just watch the, the reaction on people's face to see what they, they do. They look surprised or um, grossed out maybe sometimes. The racket gets jammed as he tries to get his second arm through. It takes a couple of minutes, but this contortionist manages to wedge himself out of a very tight bind. After that, it's not so bad until I get it down to my waist, which there's some obvious parts that are very sensitive down there that I need to deal with. After some very delicate maneuvering, this Florida carpet layer amazingly slithers all the way through the racket. And while many disbelievers are convinced Jeff's act is a big racket, Jeff swears it's all real. I've had so many people tell me they think I've got a rubber tennis racket, or they think they just don't believe it. They think my arms aren't real. They think it's an illusion. But it's not. It's real. And for Jeff, it's those very reactions that inspire him to continue putting on his Play-Doh-like antics. The best compliment you can get is a falling ovation, which in other words means someone passes out and faints because they can't take what they're seeing. Oh, <laughs>